Hello again guys, Jonathan Feist here for DroneRush.com on the show floor of CES 2020. There's a lot more to the world of drones than just flying in the backyard. There's of course the defense side of it. And in a counter drone perspective, we had to sit down with White Fox to check out their Scorpion 2 technology. We're White Fox Defense. We're the leading drone airspace security company on the planet. We build systems that can detect and mitigate rogue drones. Everything from handheld devices that can create sort of this personal geofence around you to stop any type of um, a drone that may be looking to spy on you, all the way up to full installations that we can put around airports to help protect them from drones potentially incurring into commercial airspace. And our focus isn't just only on counter drone technology, it's really focused on the, the security aspect and ensuring that we can have more drones in the airspace and make it safer for our skies for both drones and manned aircraft to operate together. So most of our clients right now are in the government space, and that's because um, there's a variety of different threats that are out there all around the world um, dealing with the potential of bad actors using drone technology to conduct attacks against government officials. So we're primarily dealing within the government space, but at the same time, we're doing a lot of outreach to the commercial sector because um, there's major companies that are trying to protect everything from stadiums and prisons and the, even their headquarters or their VIPs. Imagine um, all uh, the companies out there where people are trying to steal their technology or to fly drones over top of their operations and see where they're going with it. And so we're seeing more and more companies start to understand the importance of creating this drone airspace uh, security system to protect their own operations. And um, my understanding is we're the first ever counter drone technology firm to ever exhibit at CES. And uh, I think that talks to a lot about where the industry is going. Used to be you didn't find many drone companies at CES. Now it's, it's a major piece of it. And I think we'll start to see more counter UAS systems start to hit the market. So this is our latest security device known as the Scorpion 2. It's the smallest portable drone security device right now in the market. And what it is, is it's a handheld detection and mitigation tool. So even right now here at CES, we're able to detect that there's three drones that are either turned on or flying within our vicinity, okay? And that's what the device is, is designed to do, is to alert somebody um, when a drone is in their airspace. We have the ability to mitigate that. We won't do that here because we don't have the authorization to do that. But at the same time, we're able to detect again that there are drones on. All right, so the range on the Scorpion 2 is 500 meters. Okay, and again, that's, that's a bubble. So straight up, left, right, you have 500 meters of detection. So our systems work with a variety of different uh, drone applications. We don't just focus on one particular manufacturer, even though certain uh, drone companies may own one piece of the market. That doesn't really matter to us. We're looking at it across the spectrum. And so when we talk about a geofence, all right, we're not talking about um, necessarily making it so the drone gets stuck like a DJI aircraft, right? Where it physically will not be able to penetrate through that virtual fence. Our systems create this fence and it allows security officials to detect that the drones are in the airspace. So there could be 100 drones, a swarm of drones could be flying over top of a government building. Our system will be able to detect that and it can either automatically mitigate them, and there's some obviously laws and regulations uh, in place determining on whether or not that can be used in certain instances. Um, but at the same time, what it does is the system gives the individual security official or operator the ability to decide what to do next. It's, it's able to detect what the naked eye can't see. And so what we're doing is you're creating this safety bubble, this geofence around you that um, then ge gives the uh, individual the decision on what to do. And we can um, block a lot of things from these different types of drones. Uh, we can stop the camera feed from filming. We can shut that down in certain cases. We have the ability to um, determine even potentially even the type of manufacturer that uh, of the drone it is. We're, we're really just creating this data for security officials to be able to use to do what they do best. Yeah, that's really important. So our conversations uh, with entities within the U.S. government, even particularly the, the FAA, is they really want the ability when you're talking about um, stopping rogue drones or deciding which drones in the in the air are foe or friendly. To, be, to have the capability to not stop every single drone that may be flying. I go back to that scenario of 100 drones. What if we had 100 drones flying, but 99 of them were 
great, they were supposed to be up there, but there's that one that's the bad actor. These governments want the ability to say, let's stop that one, but allow the other ones to fly. And that's one of the things we've been focusing on. And that has to, to do a lot with remote ID. Uh, the FAA just put out a rule to get comments on this uh, new system of remote ID. We even have a system here that we call Wisdom. It's a secure remote identification management system. It uses cryptographic information to be able to create essentially what's called a digital license plate that is meant to help assist airports, security officials, governments with the remote ID issue. So something like this will be able to be attached to a drone, very, very lightweight. I mean, most drones would be able to easily put this on um, and be able to fly without any loss of battery life. And it will broadcast its registration number, its signal. So that way, let's say somebody at, at an airport has the ability to say, okay, that drone was authorized to be here. All right, and we know where it's flying and its flight path. And again, it's all about safety in the end. When we talk about counter drones, we're not against drones. We want more drones in the airspace. That's better for business. Uh, and so we're involved in making devices that are beneficial to that. Sure, so the idea is to follow the standard that the FAA puts forth in their guidelines. This system will work with White Fox technology. So one of our systems is called the Drone Fox, and it's a physical system with a computer that will be able to detect all of those drones, and this system will work and integrate with that. But at the same time, we're not trying, we understand that there can't be a one-size-fits-all solution. So the idea is also to be able to integrate this into other systems that the FAA may be required uh, to be used. And so it's meant to be a universal system that we can hand off to pilots and we can hand it off to security officials for them to give pilots if they want to fly in a particular airspace. Um, and that's where we're going with it all. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, if you want to go current events, I mean, the fact is that um, never before have people needed uh, drone security protection. I mean, when you look at the news just within the last 24 hours, there was threats from the Iranians responding to an attack on the U.S. government and responding to that attack with drones. And that means potentially striking military assets in the Persian Gulf or striking military bases. And there are not enough counter drone systems that are available that are out there that are protecting U.S. soldiers. And there should be more of it because there's some incredible systems that are out there uh, to do that. And there, there even was uh, an instance where uh, the Iranians tr uh, were potentially going to strike a naval vessel in the Persian Gulf. And there was a uh, uh, proprietary U.S. government system on that naval vessel that was able to jam that drone and knocked it out of the sky. Um, and so. It, it is very pertinent to world affairs and current events, for sure. I'm sure you heard also that there were a few rogue drones flying over North Dakota and the like. <laughs> yeah. See, that's the thing. That's the thing we were just talking about today. Had there been a system in place, like a, a Drone Fox or a, the Scorpion 2, which is our handheld personal uh, mitigation device, there would be no question as to who was doing this. We would already know. We would already know the drone, where the drones were, that it was in fact a drone. I mean, a lot of situations people assume it's a drone and it's not. Gatwick Airport, that's a fantastic example, all right? They had this drone that, dis that disrupted flights for almost 48 hours, millions of dollars in lost revenue, and they don't even know really in the end if there was even a drone up there at all because they didn't have the proper systems in place to be able to say that right away. Yes, this is a drone and we know exactly where the operator is, we know the type of drone he's flying, and we know how to stop it. Um, these systems are available now, and we're taking a number of inquiries on the, the different installs that are available to us. So I'm Brett Velikovich, I'm a strategic advisor at White Fox Defense, and we build uh, the future of drone airspace security. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much, Brett. That was really interesting, actually. I mean, the world of counter drone is more about identification and you know, taking defensive measures than it is about taking drones out of the sky. Of course, do keep in mind that legal side of things. Most of what this tech can do is not legal for home use. This is more for governments and big business that uh, need to protect their areas. That being said, if you plan to fly in a protected area, eh, you better think twice about that, especially with FEA's new remote ID tech coming out. And on that, thank you again for joining us. If you're liking what you're seeing, we always appreciate that thumbs up. And if you're subscribing, go ahead and hit that bell icon. Make sure you see what comes next. Next is more from the show floor of CES 2020. Thanks again, all. Fly safe.